Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I test the heart rate accuracy of the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. Specifically, I test the consistency of two Polar H10 chest straps over 120 training sessions. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. If I had to choose one type of device to measure my heart rate, it would be an electrocardiogram or in short ECG chest strap. I'm generalizing a bit and there are some conditions like extreme cold where this might not be true, but in general I believe this is the best option. The alternative is photoplethysmography or PPG, I hope I pronounced that correctly. That's the technique used in most wrist-worn wearables, like those made by Fitbit, Polar, Apple and Garmin. ECG sensors measure the biopotential generated by electrical signals that control the expansion and contraction of your heart chambers. That's a very direct measurement of your heart rate. PPG sensors on the other hand use a light-based technology. They basically sense the differences in light reflection that occur with the changes in the volume of blood in the veins under your skin as your heart is beating. However, this is a more indirect type of measurement. If you've seen some of my videos, you know that in my tests I use the Polar H10 chest strap as a reference device to test other devices. I originally chose this device based on different reviews and information I found online and later I learned that other companies like Withings also use it to calibrate their smartwatches. However, the question is how accurate is the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and how do we test this? Normally I would use a reference device to test it, but in this case I'm testing the reference device. To test it, I will check if the results of the Polar H10 are consistent between two Polar H10 devices. I wore both of these for more than 120 training sessions, specifically during 76 spinning sessions and 45 weightlifting sessions. Let's have a look at those results. Here I displayed an overview of the heart rate consistency between the two Polar devices. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement and because there are so many they are quite transparent, with on the horizontal axis the value according to the first Polar H10 chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the second Polar H10 chest strap. The blue line indicates perfect agreement, so any measurement along this line has roughly the same value for both devices. The more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color. As you can see, overall there is extremely good agreement between the two Polar H10 ECG chest straps, since most points are almost perfectly along the blue line. There are a few random stray measurements right here, but overall the difference is negligible. However, in past videos we've seen that depending on the type of exercise, some devices perform better or worse. So let's have a look at some example spinning training sessions and some example weightlifting sessions. Let's start with spinning, of which this is an example. Along the horizontal axis we have the time, and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue, I plotted my heart rate according to the second Polar H10 chest strap, and in red, my heart rate according to the first Polar H10 ECG chest strap I owned. As you can see, I took a few short breaks during the training where my heart rate would dip. The measurements overlap almost perfectly, which is why you can almost not see the red line at all. And this is basically what you see for all training sessions. Now while I'm talking I'll keep showing you a number of these spinning sessions, but as you can see there's basically a perfect agreement between the two. This is of course a very good sign. Now I connected both devices with two separate smartphones with two separate accounts to be sure no data is exchanged and I'm making no mistakes with the analysis. Out of all 76 spinning sessions there were two sessions that showed a discrepancy. And this is the first example of those two. As you can see, for most of the session, both agreed almost perfectly. But just in the beginning here, it had some disagreement. I suspect that the red line here is correct, since it better follows my training schedule. We see a similar pattern here for the second training session. Now, I'm not sure what's going on here. It might just be that I did not wear the new one tight enough, or maybe the signal quality in the beginning was not good enough. However, since this just happened for two out of the 76 spinning sessions and the differences are so minor, I do not believe this is a real issue. Next, let's take a look at weightlifting. 
This is where most smartwatches struggle. Weightlifting is more difficult for optical heart rate sensors because during weightlifting, I flex the muscles and tendons near my wrist, and this makes it difficult for the watch to accurately detect sudden changes in my heart rate. However, as you can see, there were no issues for an ECG chest strap. It is not influenced in the same way by muscle tension, which is why there's perfect agreement between the two Polar H10 ECG chest straps. Again, my first Polar H10 is plotted in red and the second one in blue. Since the overlap is so perfect, you can basically not even see the red line similar to before. And we see this for all training sessions. Now I'll walk you now through a few examples, but out of all 45 weightlifting sessions, not a single one showed any issues. So how does this compare to other wrist-worn devices? Again, wrist-worn watches use light or PPG to measure your heart rate. Let's have a look. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, consider subscribing to my Instagram and my weekly newsletter. Of course, you would also make me really happy if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Enough self-promotion. Let's see what the overview statistics say. Let's first take a look at some of the better budget smartwatches. On the left, we have the results for the Honor Band 6, and on the right, the results for the Huawei Watch Fit. Both of these I described in a previous video. The value for both of the smartwatches is along the vertical axis and the Polar H10 is along the horizontal axis. Now the red line here indicates those moments where the value according to the smartwatch was half that of the Polar H10 chest strap. Now I added this because in the past I've seen that when a smartwatch makes a mistake, it often predicts half the actual heart rate. Note that I took many more measurements with the Honor Band 6 here on the left than with the Huawei Watch Fit here on the right, and therefore this cloud of points is much larger and the points are more transparent. Overall, we can see that both of these agree for the most part with the Polar H10 chest strap. As for both of them, most points are along the blue line. However, as you can also see, both have some points below the blue line, especially in the middle to lower heart rate right here and right here. Now, this is due to weightlifting, which is where these kind of wrist-worn wearables often struggle. And that's what you can see in the example right here. The red line indicates the value according to the Polar H10 chest strap and the blue line the value according to the Honor Band. Now I know it says Huawei here, but that's because I downloaded the Honor data from the Huawei servers, but the plot is actually for the Honor Band. As you can see, the PPG sensor has difficulty keeping up with the spikes in heart rate that accompany each set in the weightlifting I did. And this is basically true for all training sessions, which is a real downside of these wrist-worn wearables compared to the Polar H10. That being said, I still think the Huawei Watch Fit and Honor Band 6 are good devices for their price and they perform well during cardio workouts. Next, if we compare the Polar H10 to a PPG sensor from Polar, the Polar Verity Sense, we again see pretty good agreement. I plotted the results of the Verity Sense here against both of the two Polar H10s I wore. Now the agreement here is better than for the two watches we just looked at. However, we still see some disagreement here in the middle to lower heart rate ranges. Again, this is due to similar though less severe issues while doing weightlifting. That is what I displayed here, with the Polar H10 in red and the Verity Sense in blue. You can really see that depending on the exercise I did, the Verity Sense performs really well as in the first part of the training, or a bit worse as in the second part of this training. Now we see something similar for this training session with good agreement in the beginning and a bit worse after, and also for this one. Finally, I wanted to show you the only wrist worn wearable that I've tested so far that's almost as good as a chest strap. And this is the Apple Watch Series 6. As you can see, this performed really well in all heart rate ranges and agreed almost perfectly with the Polar H10. However, this is of course in a much higher price range than some of the other smartwatches and also than the Polar H10. Out of the over 120 training sessions, only two training sessions showed any significant deviations between the two Polar H10 devices. And these deviations were still quite minor. This is a good indication that the Polar H10 ECG chest strap is accurate. However, this does not take into account any consistent structural problems that the chest strap might have. Luckily, I found in a previous video that the Apple Watch Series 6 gives almost identical results to the Polar H10 chest strap. The Apple Watch uses the other technology I mentioned before called PPG. Now the chances of two different devices from two different companies based on two different technologies having the same consistent biases is relatively small. This is therefore another indication that the heart rate tracking of the Polar H10 chest strap is accurate. So should you buy the Polar H10 chest strap? 
In general, yes, I would recommend it. It appears to be accurate based on my testing and ECG is the most reliable way of tracking your heart rate. It can be more uncomfortable than wrist-worn devices, so that's the main thing to look out for. As I mentioned in other videos, if you're into weightlifting or the gym, an ECG chest strap is definitely the best way of tracking your heart rate. There are of course limitations to the test that I did. As I mentioned, ideally I would test it against a reference device that is even better. However, given that this is not possible at the moment, in a future video I might compare it against another ECG strap from another manufacturer. Also, I just tested it while spinning and weightlifting and maybe it would perform differently during other exercises or while being worn by another person. In my videos I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch and in the end I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and consider also watching some of my other videos for instance the video on the Honor Band 6.